In our ongoing build series, I wanted to cover the Mendocino Celeron, the most famous Celeron of all time. So I bought this Celeron 366 on eBay, which is a bit beaten up, but uh, still seals in that goodness for 1999. So why is this the most famous Celeron? Well, quite simply, it could outperform the Pinium 2s of its day. Uh, you see, the Pinium 2s were sold on cards that had cash chips, and those cash chips really uh, couldn't be clocked any higher usually than the uh, rated clock speed. On the other hand, this Mendocino Celeron had on-die cache. It was the first uh, retail processor with on-die cache. And so even though it had only about a quarter of the cache of the Pinium 2, it was much faster. And so at the same clock speed, you had about equivalent performance to a Pinium 2. Now, Intel tried to keep the clocks low, tried to keep the bus speed low uh, to keep this a budget processor. Um, but people quickly found out that you could overclock these and they could perform uh, quite well. In fact, um, Celerons were easily reaching 450 megahertz in the two of the 500s, usually not breaking 600. That seemed to be the limit for the processor. But before we overclock the Celeron, we have to open it and I'll give you a little bit of a tour. Um, first, they have this hologram here for authenticity. And, you know, I wonder like, why didn't they put the hologram on the processor itself and then show the processor with some clear plastic? That would probably make more sense to prove to me that this is a real processor, but you know, whatever. Um, it's designed for the basic PC. Intel wanted you to know that uh, this was their budget class, economy class processor. Um, looking sort of at the numbers here, we see it was built uh, in summer of 99. So it's a uh, pretty fairly late model. Hopefully that will help us overclock. Uh, and uh, reading this, we have a three-year warranty, which uh, in 2020, that's really going to come in handy, huh? So let's break it open. Obviously, we've got the processor and boxed cooler itself. processor you can see it has a very big die that's all that cash talking about not big though is this boxed cooler if you look sort of through there there's not really a lot of surface area on this thing and uh, I can't recommend it at all we got this big old manual every you know every language covered um, with whatever disclaimers they want me to know but our Certificate of Authenticity and that warranty I told you about. That's great. Uh, and they tell you to make sure that you uh, put the heatsink on as opposed to not putting it on. So that's helpful. Really, most of this now that I'm looking at it is kind of just legal warranty stuff uh, and a few pages of how to install it. So that is your box processor from 1999. And now let's put it into the computer. Booting up here, I already had a 500 megahertz Celeron with the same uh, front side bus. So it's already set up for the 366, but uh, let's go for broke. Let's set it for 550 and just see what happens. All right. Will it post? Will it post? Yep. Made it there fine. Um, let's first open Quake 3. So we got 79 frames at uh, 800, 600 by a 32 bit color. Uh, that's a lot more than the 64 I got before. So Quake 3 really loves all the CPU and memory bandwidth you can throw at it. Gonna open up even more beloved game here, Unreal Tournament. See what we can do.
and we're looking at 56 frames per second there. I was only getting 42 before, so that's another big improvement for your gaming performance and uh, looking pretty stable so far. Alright, so now we're going to go on to some of the 3D benchmarks, starting with 3D Mark 99. Well, I wasn't expecting to break any records since this machine only has a GeForce 2MX. Even for 99 2000, that wasn't the best graphics card. Uh, but we have a pretty big improvement over the 500 megahertz system by about 700 3D marks and about 1000 uh, CPU 3D marks. So let's try 3D Mark 2000 next. And we're crashed. So this is where I hit a brick wall. 2000 is just not working on 550. So I'm going to have to play and see what kind of clock speed we can actually get this running stable. So there you have it. The fastest I could really stably get this to run was at uh, 478 MHz. A little bit disappointing, we couldn't push it to 550. I tried higher voltage, you know, 2.1, 2.2 volts, but neither of them seemed to make much of a difference so much as actually reducing the clock speed. So you get the good with the bad, and that's sort of what we got here. So that wraps up our Celeron 366 video. Did it overclock well? Yes. Is it crippled by the 66 megahertz front side bus? Also, yes. Did I hit 550? No. Uh, the shooters were stable. It was fun to play, but if the three benchmarks uh, don't hold up at 550, I can't call it stable. And maybe if I had liquid cooling or a Peltier or something, I could make it work. But uh, with my uh, humble air coolers, I can't make it possible. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to post some more videos showing off 98 against a dual processor XP setup with this uh, ABIT BP6 dual Celeron motherboard. And uh, thank you very much, and please like and subscribe if you want more of this content.